hey guys so one of the easiest ways for you to make money on the internet and this is not about forex or bitcoin or one of those things that is unpredictable is for you to start a web design agency now i've been doing this thing for maybe like 10 years now and i've always thought about putting everything together what i've learned over the years for people to be able to learn and implement so it's not just me trying to teach you how to maybe build a website. Now you may be wondering, I don't know anything about tech. I don't know anything about web design. This is the perfect course for you. In fact, this course is for two categories of people. You that have absolutely no idea about how to get started with building websites, getting money from clients. And the second category of persons that will benefit from this course are those that are learning programming, but want to have a skill that can help them make money while they are learning how to program. I can do both. So in this course, I'm not just going to teach you how to build a website. I'm also going to teach you how to get clients, how to scale your business, how to handle payments, how to, you know, manage all the aspects of running a web design agency. Now, in this particular tutorial, I'm going to do introduction to web design with WordPress. And if you don't know anything about WordPress, just follow the tutorial. When you're done with the tutorial, however, I'll leave a link in the description that is going to link you to the full entire web design agency course. And because we are in the Black Friday season, you can get 50% off. Now, this is not me trying to sell you a get rich quick scheme. No, it's going to take work. So you must be ready to put in the work. But if you do put in the work, I can guarantee that you can set up a web design agency that is going to generate money for you on the internet. Now, if you feel like this is a good deal and this is something you want to check out, check the link in the description where you can find more details about the course. All right, I'll see you in the tutorial. Hello, my friends, and welcome to this video. My name is Zeno, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a website for your web design agency. Now, this tutorial is going to be beginner friendly. In other words, if you don't know anything about setting up a website or you know just very little, then this website is for you this tutorial is for you so this is the website we're going to be able to build you can see we have some animations on each of the websites um, we have a gallery that shows the recent work we've completed so i can open that gallery and then i can see some of the uh my customers can see some of the designs the web designs i've done you know then we have some other things like we can advertise some other part of our business. So this is me advertising my bootcamp, my tech bootcamp for programming. Um, we can have some more content and then finally we can have a call to action button. So when a customer clicks on get started, it takes them to your contact us page where the, you can give them several means to contact you. So you see here, I have my phone and email and my address, my business address. But also we integrated a blog into the website and this is going to help for search engine optimization to help customers find you online so if i open this article here you see this is what you should know before you begin your e-commerce business and then we just do some content here to help people find us via our blog so basically we're going to show you how you're going to set up a website for your web design agency now this is actually an introduction to a full course which i'm working on let me quickly show you that so in a couple of weeks i'm going to be releasing my web design agency course where i'm going to teach you how to literally set up a web design agency even if you know nothing about it all right so you've not built a website before it's going to be a comprehensive course we're going to cover a lot so setting up your agency uh, mastering wordpress getting your first client so there are a lot of tutorials on the web about wordpress about building websites either with wordpress or some other tool but they don't actually teach you how to start getting clients and how to start managing your business so i've been doing this thing for more than 10 years and i'm going to show you how it works so that's going to be covered in the course so um if you want to um get access to that before it's actually launched then you can get a 50 percent discount so this is my website right here where i launch all my courses and if you click on this web design agency course pre-sale then it should bring you to the course page where you can add the course to your cart after you've created an account and then when you try to check out you can use the coupon code bf pre-sale 
bf presale and you're going to get 50 percent of the price for the course so if you come here just see bf presale and then click on apply it's going to apply the coupon and you're going to get 50 percent off so instead of paying 19 you're going to pay just 10 dollars now this course is super valuable because it's literally going to show you how to start a web design business without having any knowledge whatsoever about web design all right so that's about it for this one if you're not subscribed to the channel and you like content like around this niche or this topic make sure you subscribe to support us and if you want to know when i actually launch the course because in a couple of weeks i'll be launching the course then i'm going to leave a link to my newsletter so you can subscribe and then i'm going to notify you when the course is launched immediately the course is launched however the coupon will no longer be active so i had, i encourage you to take advantage of it right now all right let's get started in the project okay so to get started eh, first of all we need to establish that we are going to be building this website or we're going to be building an a web design agency on top of wordpress wordpress is a software that helps us to build websites without writing any code so if you don't know anything about programming you don't know anything about writing code you can build a website on top of wordpress all you just need to do is to learn how it works now there are four things that we need to do or we need to have in place for us to be able to build a website whether it's our website or a website for a client these four things must be in place the first is a domain name so the question is what is a domain name a domain name is simply the name of the website for example google.com is a domain name facebook.com is a domain name um not just .com it could be .com it could be .net it could be .org and all of that so if you come to google and you search for what is a domain name it's going to tell you what i just told you this one says the domain name is a unique string of characters that identifies a website address on the internet plenty grammar it simply means the name of the website perfect so let's go another google search and let's say we want to buy a domain name if you do that you're going to see a lot of results many of these results are actually adverts that have been placed on google so you can see sponsored here because this is a very competitive space that's why people are paying google a lot of money to be on the first page result but if you scroll down you see that namecheap is not a sponsored advert so this is like the first one actually so if you click on this guy it opens up in a new tab and it says here that we can search for a domain now remember the domain we want to buy is idigital.com but because a domain name can only be owned by one person I have a strong feeling that idigital.com would probably be already registered or bought by someone else. But let's still try. So I is this capital letter? Okay. Idigital.com. And then I'll say search. Remember, only one person can have the domain name. Two people cannot have the same domain name because it needs to be unique. So let's wait for the results. Voila. It tells us that it was registered in 2002 you can try to make an offer but it's going to be very expensive because it's a very uh, sweet domain name so now what i can do is you see this dot com this dot com is the domain extension and i told you that there could be dot com there could be dot net there could be so many extensions are available so this is dot xyz which is what i would have bought but it's, you see the price here is twenty two thousand dollars Okay, I don't have that money to buy a domain name for tutorial. So let's just keep going down to see if there's any one that we can just buy any other extension. The dot art is sixty eight dollars. It's too expensive for just a tutorial. So let me look for something cheaper. Okay, so there's dot ink, idigital dot ink. I think I can use this one. Um, so I'm gonna add this domain to the cart. Now, obviously, you need to create an account with Namecheap if this is your first time buying a domain or if you don't have an account with them but i have an account with them so i'll just say add to cart okay so it tells me that the domain has been added to cart and i will just say check out now namecheap offers hosting service as well okay i've not talked about hosting service i'll talk about it later let me not get ahead of myself 
it tells me here that the subtotal is three dollars sixteen cents and i'll just say confirm i would have loved to apply a promo code but i don't think there's any other promo code you can apply they've already applied something for you already so i'll just say confirm and it's going to take me to the next page where i supposed to select my payment method now what you need to do is you need to select your payment method you can use your card payment you can use paypal or if you have money in your account in your name chip wallet you can use that as well so me i've already put some money in my name chip wallet so i can click on account funds and it tells me that i have six dollars there so what that means is that i can pay from this my account funds but obviously if this is your first time you need to use your credit card or paypal all right make sure when you're using your credit card make sure your address is entered properly so that it will be able to sync and work so here i'm just going to click on continue to buy this domain name so idigital.inc and i'll just say pay now all right processing voila so it tells me thank you for your purchase which means i've been able to buy that domain name idigital.inc and we bought .inc because .com is not available if i go to manage it will open the idigital.inc domain and it will just show me some things about it all right if you try to open this idigital.inc let me um, try to copy and open it in a new tab Uh, okay so it tells me the site cannot be reached anyway no problem but the most important thing is that we've bought it so let's go back to our step and in the next one we need to set up hosting now we've set up a domain name the next one we need to set up hosting so in the next video we're going to talk about hosting all right all right so now we're going to set up hosting but what is hosting in the previous video we said that a domain name is the name of the website and before then we said that we're going to build the website on top of wordpress which is a software that helps us to build website without writing any code now just like you have a software on the computer you are watching this tutorial from or if it's a phone you have an app on the phone that software needs to be installed somewhere all right so the hosting is just a computer that is managed by like a hosting company and that computer is in the is online you know and that is where you are going to install wordpress all right that is where all the files all the images all the videos or whatever that your website is going to need or your website is going to have will be stored because remember you can store your data on top of a computer so hosting is a service where some people or a company a hosting company manages you know that computer for you all you just need to do is just pay a monthly fee all right so that's just what it is so now if you come here and you say wordpress hosting hosting you're going to see that it's also a very competitive space and so you see here this one is sponsored Let's look at this one is sponsored this one is also sponsored it's a very it's a highly competitive space right so now what are the as a professional as somebody that's been doing wordpress for a long time what hosting do i use and has it been reliable so i'm going to introduce you to a hosting there are several hostings you can use but in this particular tutorial i'll introduce you to the one i'm using which has been super reliable over the years and that is cloudways so so the good thing about cloudways is that right now there is a black friday cyber monday promo and with that you can get 40 percent off your first four months your hosting bill for your first four months so what that means is that if you're on a ten dollar plan right you you're going to pay only six dollars for the first four months all right so i'm going to leave a link in the description for you to actually register another thing is that there's a three-day free trial so you don't even need to put your credit card to register you can 
build your website, test your website, be sure that everything works before you now add your credit card. But obviously, if you don't add your credit card in three days, you're going to your server is going to be deleted. So I would encourage you to just sign up for the three day trial and then just add your credit card. So basically, or it's very straightforward. All you just need to do is just add your details. So I'm just going to add my email. So Donald Z dot ng sorry at gmail.com all right and then i'm just going to add a password all right so it's it, it has you have to add a secure password so i'll add a password and then let's just fill up i'm a digital agency zero to fifty dollars is my um average you know spend then I agree to the terms and condition. And then all you just need to do is say start for free. You're not adding any credit card. But after I sign up, the next thing I'm going to do is to add my credit card so that any website I build on top of Cloudways will not be deleted after three days in case I forget. The good thing is that you're not even going to be billed at the beginning of the month. It's at the end of the month after you've used up resources. That's when they will now send you a bill and it's pay as you go. So if you use only maybe some of the resources, then you may not even pay as much. So go ahead and sign up. So I'll just click on sign up. And then after I sign up, I'm going to confirm my account and we're going to log in together. So do that and we're going to continue in the next video. So I've created the account and I'm here to log in with that account. So this email and this is the password. And then I'm just going to click on log in. So I'm logged in right here and when you log in, the very first thing you want to do is you want to um, come here, click on this, uh, your name or this icon here and then go to my account. So the very first thing you want to do is you want to set up your payments and addresses, all right? Because if you do not set up your payment and addresses, your account is not going to be verified. So first off, you're just going to make sure you enter your address. So I'm just going to quickly enter mine. So I quickly enter the first address, which is supposed to be the card address. Then I'm going to scroll down and it's going to tell me to enter my billing address. So what I'll just do is I'll just say keep billing address same as my credit card address. So I'll click that. And next, you're going to need to verify your phone number. So make sure you just enter your phone number and verify it. I'm going to verify mine before I proceed. Now you can see at the bottom of the page here, it says click here to verify. So I'll just click here and give it a couple of seconds. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to send you a, a verification code to your phone number and you're just going to have to add that here. So I'm adding my code here. So that's 216 and I think it's 3. Let me just be sure. 381. So I'll just add the code and I'll say verify. And it says my phone number is verified so once you've done that i'm just going to add a company name for my company name i'm just going to say xeno trust and then last but not the least i'll say proceed to payment gateway now as you can see here it has brought me to this place where i just get to add my credit card details and then click on authorize now i'm going to pause the video and add my credit card details and then just click on authorize voila so it gives me the message here that it says that thank you for upgrading your account so what this means is now is that i can go ahead and use the cloudways platform uh anyhow i want to you know put my website online so i'm just going to close that and i'm just going to go back to the home page so once you have set up your account and you're on this home page here, you're going to see zero server, zero apps, and you know, everything's just going to be empty. What you need to do first is to create a server. That is where all of your WordPress websites will be on. So I'll click on this button here that says add server. And it's just going to tell me to select my application. I'll select WordPress. What is going to be the application name? Now, what this means is that when you install a server at least one wordpress will be one wordpress website will be installed on that server so here i'm just going to call the name of the wordpress website i digital 
oh sorry i'm not writing that well i'll just say i digital all right that's going to be the name of the website and then the server name i'll say wordpress server and now I'll select digital ocean for my server you see there are di different options based on what you need but digital ocean works it's like the cheapest as well now for the purpose of um the tutorial i'll just choose one gig which is going to be like 14 dollars per month you can actually go down to 11 dollars um but i'd rather just stay with this um ssd they say this ssd is faster compared to this other one so i'll just stay with this one for 14 dollars meanwhile you can install multiple number of wordpress websites on this server so it, it's actually fine then i will now come here and choose a point that is close to me a location that is close to me and probably where my client will be close also and then once that is done i'll just say launch server now this is going to take like maybe seven minutes so when i say launch server it will start launching the server and let me just close this guy and it should tell you so seven minutes so i'm just going to pause the video and in seven minutes time i'll be back to continue and after seven minutes it the um server has been installed now this is the server this is one server i have all the applications wordpress applications on this server if you click on app you'll see so we just have one iDigital, right? If I was going to build another website, all I just need to do is to say add application, this button here. I'll select the server, WordPress server, and then I'll say add application. So once I say add application, it will take me to the page where I can now um, put the name of the application. So for example, I'll say I want to install a WordPress app and I'll now say the name of the app. So for example, if the name of the app was zulu all i just need to say is to say zulu and then i'll say add application and that application will be installed for me but obviously i don't want to do that so i'll go back to the home page and then i'll just come to my view all applications so to bring me back here so now that i've installed this iDigital wordpress app i'll open it up and it will show me the details about this application for me to see the application the wordpress website or ju just need to just click on this url and it will open in a new tab all right so it has opened in a new tab this is what the new application looks like and it's on top of a cloud with url so you can see this long string dot cloud app.com now this is a cloud with url obviously it's not what we want but at least we know that we've been able to set up our hosting so right now we have the domain name set up we have the hosting set up if you go to the um slide here you see that now what we need to do is to link our domain name and our hosting and we're going to do that in the next video all right all right welcome back guys now in this one we're going to link our domain name with our hosting because remember when we try to open this domain name idigital.inc if i copy it and open it in a new tab Control v okay let's see i think it will just open something now okay so it even says the page is not working so this is a problem so but we want to find a way to link this domain name to our hosting such that when we open this domain name we're going to see this website now i'm going to come here to cloudways and then i'll see i'll come to domain management so if i click on domain management it's going to open um it's going to open this place for us now what we want to do is we want to add a domain and the domain is idigital.inc make sure you don't have any space and then just see um is it add domain or save changes okay yeah save changes if you save changes it's going to try to add that domain to your list of domains so let's give it a couple of seconds to add so you can see here we have the idigital.inc because we've added it here does not mean that it has been added completely so we need to link the two together so we've taken the domain name we've registered it inside of our hosting now we need to take something from the hosting and register it also in the domain so if i come to access details inside of this my hosting 
there's something called an ip address so if you scroll down you're going to see this public ip you now need to take this public ip address and add it to your domain so that your domain can be you know synced with the hosting so if i copy this public ip address right i'm not going to rush i'm going to go to my domain and remember we this is the domain where if you come to your domain list let's say you just land on um namecheap you land on namecheap you can come here to your dashboard and then your dashboard you can come to domain list but if you see the domain here so you can also just click on manage so i'll just come to i digital so look at it and then i'll click on manage you can see i have a lot of domain because i've been doing this thing for a long time so once you come here right there are two ways you can add you can link your hosting to your domain i'm going to cover all the ways you can link your hosting to your domain in the full course but primarily now we want to just add our ip address so i'll come to advanced dns depending on the hosting you're using but depending on the domain service you're using but if you're using namecheap and you want to add an ip address you just need to come to advanced dns so if you come to advanced dns you will see that there is this thing called cname record and there's this thing called url record you want to delete it so i'll click on delete and say yes i'll click on delete and then i'll say yes perfect so now i'm now going to say i want to add my own record so i'll say add new record it will ask me what kind of record do i want to add i'll say i want to add an a record and then for this a record i'll i'll say the host is at then the ip address i will now paste in that ip address i copied from my um my hosting and then i'll click on this tick to save changes okay so now it's going to take a maybe a couple of minutes for the domain name and the hosting to sync it's going to take a couple of minutes so if i even try to come here and refresh this idigital.inc it may not even it may still say the site cannot be reached so but if i give it a couple of minutes eventually it will sync and then i'll be able to access it so what i'm going to do is i'll just wait for some time and then i'll come back and check it all right so one of the ways that you can check if your domain has your ip address has been propagated or if the domain and hosting has been synced is you can come to this website called what what is my dns what's my dns.net so what's my dns.net and then i'm just going to see i digital.inc and so it's a record i want to search for because that's what i added and then i'll say search if you do that you see it's telling me that my ip address has been added and it has spread to all of these countries so it means this website can be accessed from all of these countries so now that you've done that um i'm going to copy the website and then i'll try to open it in another tab so is it telling me that the page cannot be found all right there are there are several reasons why this is happening but let me try and fix them so the first thing is that when i came here to add this ip address i added just for at so i'm just going to copy this guy ctrl c and then i'm just going to say i want to add another record it's also going to be an a record but this time i'll say www that's going to be the host so what this means is that anytime somebody types www.idigital.inc it's also going to open so i'll come here and then i'll paste the same ip address oh i'm sorry i'll paste this same ip address here and then i'll click this check to save changes so this will also now start you know linking all right so that's one the next thing i want to do is since um this one has already propagated i'm going to come to my hosting and in this my domain management i'll say that i want to make this idigital.inc the primary domain 
so i'll do like this and then i'll say make primary set as primary it's going to take like a couple of minutes to set so i'll just pause the video and when it has set it as the primary domain i'm going to come back so now while it's setting the primary domain i'm going to come here to my dns what's my dns.net and then i'll just add www dot in front of the idigital.inc and i'll say search i want to show you that it actually takes some time so you see it's green here but it's red in the next state in us so you see that it's actually taking some time to gradually propagate that's what it's called it's called dns propagation so it's spreading in other words the um, hosting and domain they are syncing across these various locations so it will take some time but eventually everything will become green so that's just how it works so right here you can see that idigital.inc has been set to the primary domain now let's go and try and open it again i expect that there will be a problem but no, pro no issues we're going to solve everything i'll try and open it again and see what it says now it's it probably it may probably tell me that my site cannot be reached because where i am right now i'm in nigeria so the ip address may have not propagated or spread to nigeria so if it doesn't work now what i'll do is i'll just use my dns i'll use my vpn to check so let me just connect to my vpn and i'll, I'll try to check it again so continue for free vpn is on okay and then i'll just try to check this one again so you see it has immediately opened the website because i changed my vpn uh i changed yeah i added i used the vpn so but there's a problem here if you look at this top here it says not secure if you click on it you see that it gives us this warning sign that the site is not secure all right so in the next video we are going to fix this problem of the site not being secure all right i'll see you in the next one then but in this one we've been able to successfully link the domain name to the hosting all right all right welcome back guys now if i come back to our slide you see here that in number three we said we wanted to link the domain name to the hosting which we've done so number four is to actually start our design but we encountered a problem which is this warning sign here that says that the site is not secure so in web design there's something called ssl so let me see what is ssl so let me see ssl it actually stands for secure socket layer well you really don't need to like delve into it i can tell you what it means or what it does okay they say it's an internet security protocol that encrypts data to keep it safe perfect this is the perfect definition of what ssl is it's a it's an internet security protocol that encrypts data what does it mean to encrypt data so for example if i go to my website course.zenotrustacademy.com and i try to log in okay now if i put my email and my password here right one one of the things i don't want to happen is that i don't want an external party to be able to steal that information from this my form or maybe for example if i wanted to make payments and i wanted to enter my credit card details i don't want an external party to be able to steal this information so one of the things that you need to do is to encrypt the information such that it's if i put abc here by the time the information is being transmitted to the server it's not transmitted as abc for example if i say let's just say if i say my email for example donald z by the time this information is being transmitted to the server it will not be transmitted as donald z it will be encrypted in such a way that it does not have any meaning to an external party until it gets to the server so ssl kind of tried to use that encryption method to secure the data that is being exchanged on your server on your website so if i come here and i click on this guy here you see that connection is secure that's because i have ssl installed but if i come to the iDigital, you see connection is not secure 
so what we need to do now is to install from the hosting we can install that ssl which is for securing our website so if you come here and you say ssl certificate it's going to ask you to put an email address which you're going to put and the domain name so here i'm just going to see um where's the i digital so let's just copy the i digital Control c so i'm going to come back here and then i'm just going to see the email and then i digital now this is going to be www.idigital.com.inc and then i'll just say i want to install this certificate so install it's a let's let's encrypt certificate that's the name of the organization that provides this certificate for our website for free so this is also going to take a while and i'm just going to pause the video and let it install and then we're going to come back so i get a notification here that the ssl has been installed and it's going to automatically renew itself every i think maybe every month or every two or three months so if you now come back to the idigital.inc and you refresh the page it's supposed to i expect it to pick the new certificate okay let me just let me just uh close this guy and yeah it has been installed so let me come here and let's open it oh why am i still getting this uh notification it's not supposed to give me this notification again because i've installed ssl okay maybe i don't know maybe it has not like let me remove the vpn and and try to open it again okay i think i know what the problem is i i definitely remember i definitely know what the problem is so when we installed the ssl certificate we typed out www.idigital.inc so i think what i should have done is to just say idigital.inc that's what i should have just done and then i'll just say save changes so by doing that it will both cover for www and whether you put the www dot or not but since i add i made this specific to www dot idigital dot inc whenever i put only idigital dot inc it will not recognize that it has a certificate so i think that's the problem so now that i've added it everything should work so let's just give it a couple of seconds and you know we'll be back so it tells me that the installation is complete and now if i come to the access details and i try to open the idigital.inc you see here that everything opens perfect if you click on this icon here you see now that it says connection is secure which means that we've installed the ssl and any information that is exchanged on our website is going to be encrypted and secure so that is it about installing the ssl in the next video we're now going to start setting up the website proper all right i'll see you in the next one then so now let's go back to our presentation and see where we are so i've added some things so we've done one two three now we're in the design part now in the design part we're going to start with this first one which is the dashboard and the front end now ideally i should have said wordpress dashboard and the front end now what is wordpress dashboard because what we can see here is just this website we're not seeing anything that looks like a dashboard all right so what is this wordpress dashboard that we're talking about when it comes to the design you need to know these three uh, items so if you come to cloudways in the access details for your app first of all you see the app url or the website url which is what we've already opened but if you now come here you now see this admin panel now if you open this admin panel you're now going to see the username and the password now we need to add a username or an email and a password one of the reasons why we installed the ssl is such that when we add these details and we say login the information will be encrypted before it is sent to our server 
so now i'm going to come back to my cloudways and this is the username which is this email and then this is the password so i'll copy the password and then i'll come back here and then i'll just type in the email and paste in the password then i'll say login voila so what you see here is called the wordpress dashboard so you can see dashboard here so if you come back to our presentation you see that we've now covered the first one which is wordpress dashboard so what's now the front end of the website we've already seen the front end of the website the front end is the part of the website that your users can see and this is it right here it doesn't make much sense it's not fine but no wahala the most important thing is that we have the front end which is the one the user can see and we have the dashboard which is where you can make changes that will now reflect on the front end so for example if i wanted to change the way this page looks i would need to do that on the back end so let me increase the um, size so that you can see it well so this is the back end i can dismiss this i don't need all of that i can hide message and all of that perfect so in the what do we have next in our presentation we have the themes and plugins so in the next video we're going to talk about the themes and the plugins see you there so next what do we have here we're going to talk about the theme and plugins so what is a theme well basically a theme is just a design layout for your wordpress website and the, the best way to describe it is just to show you so i'm going to come to our dashboard and if you look at the menu on the left you will see we have appearance plugins if you come to appearance oh first of all we have so many things here that we don't need so what i'm going to do is i would say screen options click on screen options let's just hide some of these things so wordpress event i don't need to see that um quick draft i don't need to see that activity uh where is activity okay so i don't need to see any activity for now um okay maybe this one i can just leave here so at a glance can come up site health well for now i don't need to see anything about the site health so i'll just leave at a glance and this object cache and this object cache is just something to speed up your website don't worry we'll talk about it later so don't disturb yourself too much so i just want this to be clean now if you come to appearance and you're going to see something called themes i remember i said that the theme is just the layout design layout of your website so if you go to theme right you're going to see these are the themes that come with wordpress the original installation so if you click on add new theme it's going to show you various designs various layouts various themes that you can install so if you keep scrolling down you're going to see so many designs so many themes that you can install in fact you can even come here and search so for example if you want to search for maybe shop something that has to do with maybe selling you can say shop and you're going to see so many themes that has to do with shop and all of that now obviously i'll tell you how you can find a theme because many of these themes well you, you you don't want to install anything you see online right you want to be sure of what you are installing so what i want us to install is um a theme called astra so let me just come to theme again and then i'll say add new theme all right i wanted to come start afresh so that you will see that once you click on add new theme you're going to see the fastest themes so from hello elementor to astra these are one of the fastest wordpress themes and very secure because they have a strong community that's always working on them so what i want us to do is to use this astra theme so i'll just click on install and it's going to take a couple of seconds and it has installed so very fast when you install it you also need to activate it so here i'll click on activate it's also going to activate voila 
so this is some notification which i can close it's telling us that we can import some starter templates that's not what we want for now we're going to talk about that later in the course so you see here we have astra which is active and we have these other themes now as a rule of thumb eh, you don't want to have many themes installed on your website so for example this one we're never going to use it so i'll click on theme details and then i'll click on delete it's going to pop up this notification and i'll say okay it will delete that one 2024 i'll click on okay maybe i'll leave 2024 i'll remove this one i'll say theme details and then i'll click on delete like so voila so i'll just leave these two themes and that's it now if you come to the front end of your website and you refresh it you'll see that it would have changed so look at this we have it has changed that's the most important thing uh -huh. so now let's go back to our slide so you see we've talked about themes all right the next thing we want to talk about is plugins so in the next video we are going to talk about plugins all right in this video we're going to talk about plugins and so what is a plugin now let me explain before i you know show you what it is so you see wordpress eh wordpress as a software there are some functionalities it does not have all right so for example it does not have the um functionality of displaying a contact form so what is a contact form it's just a form where people will just fill their name their email and you know type a message and say send and you as the owner of that website you are supposed to get that email wordpress in and of itself doesn't have that functionality so but what wordpress did is that they gave other developers the opportunity to contribute to wordpress so there are so many like for example these themes you see here they were built by other developers astra for example wasn't built by wordpress itself it was built by another team there are so many plugins that add various functionalities to wordpress so that's why they are called plugin so you're plugging a software another software into wordpress so let me show you if you come here to plugins and you click on add new plugins right you're going to see so many plugins this plug they are so much they are in thousands and they are doing different things so many different things so let me show you something so um for example if we want to build a page on wordpress there is a plugin let's just say page builder all right page builder now you're going to see look at this this is elementor it has more than 10 million active installations elementor is one of the biggest page builder but there are other page builder look at this this is page builder by site origin um this is beaver builder all of these plugins you see here they help you to build a land a page on wordpress remember you're not going to write any code so basically it's just drag and drop so that's it another thing is if you search for contact form contact form all right you're going to see there are several look at this this is contact form seven this is wp forms this is forminator fluent form there are so many of them right that help you achieve a particular task inside of wordpress so that is what a plugin is it's just a software that adds a particular functionality to wordpress that's what a plugin is so what i want us to do is let us actually just install one plugin that does something so but before i install the plugin i need to show you what it will do so first off let's create a page i'll come here or no i'll just say all pages i wouldn't want to create a page now i'll say all pages and then i'll just click on this sample page and i'll say edit so come to the edit and click on edit okay so look at what it feels like look at what it looks like right um maybe i'll just go back and i'll say i want to create a page so let's just say add new page and you're going to see so it's going to tell you to add the title of the page and you know some other things here now this was uh, i don't really like the layout of this page builder of this um 
page rather so what i can do is i can go to a layout that looks cleaner and i can just install a plugin that will just show me a cleaner layout so here i'll just go back and then i'll see uh plugins i'll say add new plugin and it's classic editor that's the plugin so i'll click on install take a couple of seconds after you install a plugin for that plugin to start working you need to activate it so i'll say activate so once you've done that let now let's come these are the list of plugins we have don't worry we'll talk about them later but i'll come back to page and i'll say add new page can you see that the experience is different so now it's easy for me to say i want to add a page title and this is the content of the page and then i'll just click on publish it's a lot easier than what we had before you know so that is what a plugin is about all right so uh in the next video we are now going to start let's come back to our presentation so we're now going to start setting up our website since we've known what a theme is we've known what a plugin is let's go ahead and set up our website all right i'll see you in the next one then so we are back and we want to set up our website now the first thing we need to do when we want to set up our website let's come to the finished project is we need to create pages so this is the home page there's a blog page there's a contact page so let's create those three pages first so i'm going to come here so you need to be on page and add new page so the first one i want to create is called home page and then i'm just going to click on publish all right the next one i want to create i'll click add new page again is this button at the top i'll say contact and then i'll say publish and the last one is going to be blog and publish so we have those three pages and if we refresh this one you're going to see that it's showing us all of the pages right here so let's come back here to all pages and you see this sample page i don't want it so i'm just going to delete it delete the sample page and now i have blog and these three pages and the privacy policy which is a draft page draft means that it's not visible on the front end so let me show you again let me show you what that means so i'll open this page in a new tab edit and you see here that the status is published if i wanted to make this page not to be visible on the front end i'll come to visibility and i'll say edit and then i can set it to either private or public if you set it to private it means that it will not be visible on the front end in other words it will be like a draft page all right so oh sorry sorry I, I apologize for that for the published if you click on edit let me cancel it so for this published status if you click on edit you can now set it to draft which means it will not be it will be like you're still working on the page you've not published it yet so that's just what i wanted to point out so let me cancel this and come back here to all pages and we're good to go so now that we've created these pages we need to have a way for them to be displayed here in a way that is organized we need to have a way to display those pages here in a way that is organized so we're doing from the top to the bottom right so i'm going to come to the pages and all of these pages i'll put them inside the menu so here i'll come here and say appearance and then i'll say menu so click on menu and it's going to tell us to create a menu so that's the first thing you want to do you want to create your first menu below so i'll just call this menu home menu and then i'll say create menu you want to make it your primary menu and you want to say create menu so you see the menu has been created now what you want to do is you want to add your pages to the menu so if you come to this side by here you see blog contacts and pages you now say add to menu so you you've added them to the menu you can arrange them anyhow you want just by click and drag it all right so that's home blog and contact and then you can say save perfect so you have the menu 
and all of that now this menu you've created it's still not what is here it has not come here yet but what is displayed here is just all the pages you have but at least we know that we've created the menu we'll, we'll use that menu later so let me close this guy and then we'll come back here we've created the pages and this is what we have on the home page so we're having this blog post which is not what we want we want this our home page to be the landing page the primary page when a person lands on the website so i'm going to come here and we're going to come to settings so settings and let's start with the general setting so in this general setting first off it's telling us what's your site title i'll just say i digital i digital so yeah and then the tagline now what is this tagline well if you come here and you just put your mouse here you see it say cloudways next gen cloud hosting blah 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 if i come here it says web design agency and then it says my location so what you want to do is you want to put like something that people search for so here i know people search for something like web design agency in their location so here i just put my own location right site icon we're not going to talk about that now we'll talk about it later then you can just scroll down and you can say save changes all right now if you come here and you refresh this page you will see that this will change to iDigital ideally you can put a logo here but we'll talk about that in another video so here i'll come back and then i'll come to writing i want to go through all the settings so well there's really nothing that's going to change anything here so i'll leave it i'll go to reading um so it says your home page displays your latest post so ideally you want your home page to display a static page and you will now select the page so we've created the home page then for the post which is our blog post we will now say we want it to be displayed on the blog you see all right so you can read all these ones if you like but i'll just come here and say save changes okay then discussion uh well this is about when people add comments to your blog we're not going to dwell on this now but we'll talk about it later then is there any other thing i think permalinks now this permalinks make sure that your yours is set to post name so that it will help your search engine optimization which we'll talk about also later then i think that's about it so i'll just come back to plugins install plugins and i'll just look at what we have here so normally when you install wordpress there are some plugins that will be installed for you like this hello dolly we don't need it it doesn't really do any specific thing for us then we have breeze and object cache these two plugins they are very similar they are doing something similar they are trying to speed up our website all right so i'll deactivate this breeze so that object cache will just work and then i'll delete it now this and akismet i'll just leave it for now maybe later on in the full course i'll talk about it so basically we just have these two plugins and we have um, everything set up all right so if you come here and you open the home page you're going to see that it just shows us this page and we have this home tab now in the next video we're now going to start building out the home page from the top to the bottom all right i'll see you in the next one then so we're going to start by building out the home page and we're going to start from top to bottom this is what we've already built so this is the template we are following so let's come here and like i said we're starting from top to bottom so first off we're going to go to the back end or the dashboard and we're going to start with making sure that this menu is set properly so if you come to the dashboard you're going to come to appearance and customize i right click and i'll open in a new tab so that's first i want to make sure that the menu is set so once you do that it opens up this guy and you want to come to the is it the header builder header builder so primary menu the site title and logo which i said we'll talk about logo later but for now i'll just say primary menu and i will let me see 
I think I can say configure menu from here. Okay. So the primary menu is set to the home menu. I would also set secondary menu to home menu. Set the off canvas menu to home menu. Just home menu everywhere. And then I'll just say publish. So by doing this, I've made sure that anytime this menu is set to the home menu. So once we've done that, we can close this customizer and come back here. All right. So now let's come to the pages and say all pages. And then we want to come to the home page and say edit. So in this home page, if you come here, you see that we have this home uh, text. We don't want that, right? Look at the finished project. There's no text there. So what you want to do is you want to come to your home page and you want to come and see that. Hold on. You scroll down. I'm looking for. Um, I'm looking for the funk, uh, the I'll say disable title. And I think that should do it. Let me just look at it one more time. Yeah. Perfect. So this will disable the title. So just go ahead and click on update. And once it has updated, come back here and refresh the page. You should not see this home. Perfect. Good. So we have the header and we have the footer. Now you see this footer, copyright, iDigital, powered by Astra is advertising their own website. Well, you don't want that on your website. <laughs> so you want to remove it so that people don't leave your website to Astra. It's just common sense. So you're going to come back here and come to appearance and go back to customize. So in the customize, you want to look for the footer. All right. So here I'm just going to see footer builder. And it's just going to select. Um, so copyright. And basically. Look at it right here. I just want to get rid of this powered by theme author. So just get rid of it. And then just say publish. Voila. So if you come here and you refresh the page, you should not see this. Uh -huh, so it's gone. You see how fast um, Astra is? It's a very fast thing. So let's close the customizer. And now we can now start building out the page. Good. So we're going to start with this guy, which is this first hero section. So for us to build out this page, we're going to install a page builder called Elementor. So I'm going to come to plugin. And I'll say add new plugin. And the name of the plugin, like I said, is Elementor. It's one of the most popular page builder in WordPress. So I'll say install. And then I would also install this essential add on for Elementor. It's a very wonderful plugin as well. So I'll say install as well. And then I'm just going to say activate the Elementor. All right, it will bring me to the plugin page and then I'll say activate the essential add on for Elementor as well. So, those are the two plugins we need. I'm going to come back to my pages and then I'll say this home page, for example, I'll say edit, but I'll open it in a new tab so that I still have my dashboard. So, now you notice that we now have this edit with Elementor button. So with this button, once you click on this button, you'll be able to edit any page with Elementor. So let's click on it. It's loading. Excuse me. So first off, you want to skip. You want to close this guy. And this is what the editor looks like. All right. So let's look at what we are trying to achieve. We want to achieve this design. I think I can close some of these guys that I'm not using. Okay. So we want to achieve this design. So we're going to start here. So if you come here to Elementor, sorry, Elementor is right here. What you want to do is you want to click on this plus icon to add something called a container. Now this container, they are of two types. There's the flex box and there's the grid. Hmm? I would ex I would take out main time to explain the two of them the difference in the full course, but for now, 
whenever we want to add a new container we should always add a flexbox container all right if you look at this guy you see that it's just a single container so i'll just come back here and then i'll say i want to add a single container like this the first one so this is the container right here and what do we have inside the container so if you look at this container you see that we have this text and we have this button and then there's a background um, image so you want to come to and of obviously there's space on top and below so we've identified all the things that the content properties of the container so the first property is the background image so if you click on this button here let's add a background image to the container so i'm going to come here first of all i'll make sure that this container is tall or maybe not that i can just come and add the background image first so to add a background image you need to come to the styles or the container and you need to see this is background so you need to come here and say classic click on this classic and you're going to have two options either to add a background color or a background image we want to add a background image so click on plus icon it will now open your media gallery now in this media gallery i can either drop the image i want or i can select the file so let me show you i have a folder where i've added all the images that we need look at all the images that we need but i will not add everything once i'll be adding it when we need it so this one for example i'll just drag it and drop it here is the background image now this is it right here and then i'll just say select you see it has added this background image which does not look good but don't worry we'll fix it now this background image if you scroll down you're going to see image resolution is set to full position you want it to be center center then or maybe center top i can't even see center top is it top center now i don't even know let's just say center center then the repeat you want to set it to no repeat then the display size you want to set it to cover all right so you see this is it because there's no content inside this container that's why it's small so what you can do is you can come to the layout and you can give this container a minimum height so for example if you stretch this container height you see i've, re I've increased the height to like 400 and let me just increase it some more you see i've increased the height so if you come here you will see that the container is actually tall so now that we've sorry now that we've you know done this we can now add all the components like the text the button and all of that so to add the text in this container yeah, you need to click on this plus icon to add an element and i'll just say text and the text we want to add the elements we want to add is this fancy text so if you drag this one you can drop it inside here you see fancy text now look at the text is too close to the top if you come to the finished project you see that there's space between the top and the bottom so if you come back here you want to add that space so first off click on this guy the container itself and come to advanced so to add a space on the top and on the bottom you see this padding it means that you want to you know add a space inside of this container so first off you need to click this to disconnect each of the various uh, sides of the container so that you can add only on the top so for example if i wanted to add 100 space of 100 on the top i'll just say 100 but before if this was not you know unchecked if i say 100 here it will add the 100 both on the top on the side on the bottom and on this other side so you see 100 is everywhere so that was why i say i uncheck this value so that i can add only where i want so i want to on the top no not 1100 and on the bottom 100 as well and this 100 is in pixels px so now that you've done that you will now will now come here and you know fix this stuff so what do we have here we have for quality web design for quality website mobile app e-commerce so i'll come back here and then i'll just click on this text 
if you just click on this text it will show you the components here the elements here so this is the so here we're going to see for quality so that's the first text then the suffix text this is of the sentence i want to remove this all right so for quality now you can now come here and say website then the second one so let's close this one the second one i'll say e-commerce then the last one i'll say mobile apps all right so you see now the next thing is to now style it so to style it you just need to come to style so for the prefix text we're going to change the color what color did we use we said this color and this color all right so i'll come back here and for the prefix text i'll select this color this click here and then select a color i remember what color i saw just now yeah so something like this then the size of the text also will be increased so i'll click on this one and i'll increase the size of the text to maybe something like this yeah 32 then for this other text we're going to come here to fancy text styles and then let's start with the color I think this is the color and I'm just going to make it this orange color. So come here. Aha. And then let's increase the size. So typography, click on it and increase the size. Okay. Perfect. So it may not be exact the same size as the finished project, but at least is similar. So the next thing you want to do is you want to add a button, which is this button, get started now. And when you put your mouse on it, it will say now. So let's go ahead and add the button. So I'll come here, I'll say add element. Oh, by the way, you need to save it. Anytime you make changes, make sure you save it. So here I'll just come and click on publish and it will save the changes. So this change that I've made now, if I come here and I refresh this page, you're going to see those changes. So you see? So the back end is where you make changes and you can see those changes on the front end. So let's go back to the dashboard and let's add a button. So here I'll search for button. Now for you, this your terminal here might be white, depending on your theme. Uh, I'll, maybe in another place, I'll just see how to change the theme. I can't remember. It's one of these settings here. But anyway, let's just add the button. So you want to add this creative button with EA and put it here like this. So look at the button. You see that it's at the edge here. You want to put it at the center. So to put it at the center, I think you just let's just go to styles first so that we'll put the button at the center. And then I will see the button alignment to be center. Aha, look at it. So let's come back to the content and style the button so what does the button actually say it says get started now so i'll come here and then i'll say get started is it capital letter now okay it's all capital letter so here i'll say get started and the secondary button i'll say now all right now for the link of the button, I want you to go to the contacts page. So I'll right click on this contact page and say copy link address. And then I'll come here and paste it in the link URL. See, that's it. Then the button needs to have an icon. So I'll select this icon and say arrow. Aha. So which arrow did I use? I use this one. And I'll say insert. So it's going to add the arrow here. All right, so let's now change the color of the button and all those things. So um, we'll come to styles and then uh, set button effects. 
we're going to set the effect let me show you what the effect is when you hover on the button you want it to show that now text so if i click on this button and i come to styles i'll now see winona what this will do is that it will add that effect that when you put a uh, hair you see it has changed perfect then you want to change the background color of the button so normally you want the color to be green then when you put your mouse or hover on it you want it to be is it orange i used okay orange so i'll now say that normally i'll set the uh background color to is green i used so let me just look for this shade of green and if you want to use this green in multiple places hmm? if you want to use the green in multiple places like for example you notice i use green here i also okay orange i also use green here and all of that okay i think that's the main place i use green so i'll do it for the orange color since i didn't use green too much so let me just make it a bit lighter i think this is fine and just click outside so that's it then when you put your mouse on it so i'll come to hover and then i'll set the orange color so the background color when you hover on it i'll set that to my orange let's see that's too dark i know that's too much too dark ah i think this is okay so now what i can do is you see this orange color i'll copy it and i'll save it so that i can use it later so to save a color such that you can use it later right all you need to do is click on this custom but uh, this guy custom and then just say um hold on no. oh okay no not the custom click on the color picker and then click on the plus icon to create a new global color so once you do that you're just going to see the name of the color so i'll just say orange and then i'll just say create so by doing that i can use this same exact orange color in multiple places all right so if, let's come back here you notice that um another thing we notice here is that the space between this one and this one is much so if i come here in this my button i can now add space so click on the button and then come to advanced all right now i'm going to add imagine imagine is like a space between the two elements so i'll say first of all I'll disconnect it and i'll say i want to add the margin on top so let's just add 30 or 50 all right 50 okay so i've added 50 px or 50 pixels on top of this button to add a space between this one and this one and then i'll just click on publish so i'll come here refresh this page and now we have a button and if we click on this button it should take us to the contact us page which is empty for now all right so that's about it for this one in the next one so i think everything is set maybe i'll just increase the height of the entire container just a little bit um so i think it's okay like this and then i'll just say publish and just like that we've built the hero section so the next in the next video we're going to build out the uh, about us section of the website so i'll see you in the next one then okay so now let's go ahead and build out the about us section and to do that we need to come over to the page builder here and i will scroll down and add another section which is going to be a flex box remember i told you that when you're adding your like your primary section always make it a flex box now in this flex box this time i would make it um let's just say we wanted to have four columns or maybe this one this one seems better three columns so i'll put three columns there and as you can see it has one here here and here so what you want to do is uh, all the content you want to put is going to be in the middle column because if you come to the finished project you see that 
it just occupies just this small section here all right so let's continue so i'm going to come back here and i will see that i want to bring in an element and inside this guy i'll bring in another container so just drop a container here and then inside this container we're now going to bring in the heading so i'll say add element and then i'll just say heading and this heading we're going to need two of it so let's add another heading like this yeah perfect now for the first heading we wanted to say it's going to be a small text that will say about us now particularly for this uh, small heading there are some things that we're going to need to do because okay let's just start <clears throat> so for here i would click on this guy and then i'll say about us so about us and then for here we're going to click on this one and see i think it's who we are who we are all right perfect now for both of them you want to make them centered so if you come to styles you can click on this one to center it in alignment and we can do the same for this one so center now you'll notice that the color and the size needs to change that's one of the things we need to do here so let's start with the let's click this one and start with the color so in the styles tab you're going to see this guy here so just click on this um custom and they already have some colors that we can just select i think this one is okay then the size which is in typography so you're going to see size here and we can just make it i think this is fine 20 is fine then we can change the font family so the font family i use is rosa r-o-s-a r-o-s-a yeah so this is it's rosa revo okay so by looking at it i'm feeling like the font size is too big so let's reduce it a bit yeah i think okay i'm also going to change the width to like 500 so that it's not too thick okay i think this is better then for this one we're going to just change the color so we're going to say text color and we're going to use our orange color perfect now obviously we forgot to add some padding you know around this container so i'm going to select the entire container by clicking on this guy and i'll go to advanced so first of all let's unlink the values so we can set them individually and i'm going to say 50 pixels on the top and 50 pixels on the bottom so we have some space now also if you look at the heading you see you notice that they are close to each other they are not the space between them is not much so what i will do is i'll come back here and i will select this container in which the two headings are contained this second one here not this first one the second one i'll select it and then i'll just scroll down now you notice that there's this gaps property this gaps property means the space between the elements inside the gap between the elements inside so i'll just unlink the values and it's currently set to zero oh there's a problem why is it not responding did i select the right this one and gaps okay let me just increase it to maybe like 50 and see if it changes anything oh something is wrong all right so i just need to figure out what exactly the problem is why is it not responding oh okay i'm sorry this heading is not inside it i'm really sorry it actually worked so if i click here and scroll down and set the gap to zero let me unlink it and i just need to bring this second heading inside it that was the problem hold on inside it oh wow okay so i think it's inside now so all i just need to do is set it to zero so zero and zero so you see so you have to be very careful that the elements you want are in the same container so this container now has these two elements 
wow perfect so next we need to add the text so this one like this and then i'll copy this text and then i'll come back to my elementor now this time i will add an element and the element i want to add is this text editor now this text editor we're just going to put it below this guy perfect select it and then i'll just come here and paste in yeah now obviously it's not centered so if you come to style we can center it by clicking on center so it's going to be centered now one more thing i want to be sure of is this i need to increase the width of this middle container so what i'll do is i'll click on this first container and as you can see it's 25 i'll make it to be 20 then this one i'll click on this other one i'll make it to be 20 all right then i'll make the middle this one to be 60 so 20 plus 20 that's 40 plus 60 that's 100 so 60 aha so this works for me now i'm just going to go ahead and save so publish and then i'll come here i'll refresh this page let's see what we have voila so we now have the about us section the heading and the text so what do we have next we have the services section so we're going to do the services section in the next video all right i'll see you in that one all right so we're going to build out the services section now and this is this particular section you see here and don't don't worry it's a lot simpler than it looks so what i'm going to do is i'll come here and we're going to add another section so i'll say plus and then i'll add a layout now um this layout let me just look at it one more time okay so it's going to be a full width layout okay perfect so i'll i'll, I'll click on this flex box remember that's the rule and then i'll just say i want this um full width layout perfect now don't forget that first of all we need to add space that's padding at the top and bottom <clears throat> excuse me so i'll first unlink it and say that i want to add the padding of 50 in the top and 50 in the bottom the next thing i want to do is i want to change the background color of this section so i'll click on styles and then i'll just select this classic background type i'll say classic and then we now have the color and image what we want is a background color so i'll just click on this to bring out the color picker and then i already know the um code for the color so it's for me it's hash e e e yeah this color so that's one so now that we have this in place what we need to put first is this header or this heading rather so i'll come here back and instead of redoing everything we did here right you can actually just put your mouse on this edge here and then right click and say copy all right then you can come here click on this one and right click and say paste voila so you see life is very easy when you're working with elementor so now all i just need to do is to highlight this guy and say what did i even say okay our services and then what we do so here i'll come back here i'll highlight this guy and then i'll change this to our services and here i'll change this one to what we do perfect now what do we have next we have one two three this section that has three uh three columns one two three and two rows and then we have content inside of it so let's go i'll come here and say that i want to add let's add an element and this element is going to be a container so we're going to come here and drop the container no not a container sorry so let me say ctrl z we're going to drop a grid so come here and drop a grid like so now you see this grid has one two three one two three but you can even change the number of columns and rows it has so for example if i come here i can say that this is columns and this is row i can say that i want it to have three rows and as you can see it's now three if i want it to have one i can just say one and see just one row and three columns if i want to reduce the number of columns to two i can just say two and then it changes here 
but actually what i want is i want three columns and two rows yeah so this is perfect now inside of these guys we're now going to insert another element so click here and then i'm going to say i want to insert an icon box so this is it right here so just right click draw sorry select it and just drag it and drop it inside the first no this is not uh -huh, inside the first one perfect so let's look at what we have here this one says web design and then we have some text i think i can just type out web design i'll copy this one and then i'll come back here and select this element so here i'll say web design and here i'm just going to paste in the text perfect now this icon it needs to change so i'll just select the icon and then i'll say i think maybe code has something to yeah so this is it and then i'll insert okay perfect so now let's work on it this is going to be green this is going to be black and then okay so i'll come back here i'll say i want to go to the styling let's look at it again okay so i'll say i want to go to the styling styles and then what's what do we have first alignment everything that's fine okay want to style the icon so for the icon i will see that i want it to have the do i have a green color anyway let me just choose ascent then for the so that's for the icon and i think the size is okay then for the content so we have the title we we're going to set the title to excuse me to have a dark color then i want the space between the title and this text to be reduced so i would say um, excuse me i'm trying to figure out where that is okay i think it will be in the box not in any of that so icon spacing content spacing so let's reduce it so i think this is a lot better and it looks closer to what we have here so then we need to add some spacing around the container here and then this border so here i'm going to come back here and then i'll select this guy itself okay and then i'll go to advanced remember when you want to add spacing it needs to be padding now this padding we're not going to unlink it because we want the space to be around the entire thing so here i'll just come here and i'll just be increasing it so maybe increase it to like maybe four or five i think this works then i will now collapse this one and then i'll go to border now if you come to styles you're not going to see border here so but you can always see it in the advanced setting so i'll collapse the layout and then i'll just look for border okay so this is border and then in the border i'll just select that i want it to be solid so that's the first then i'll give it a width of one pixel then i will give it a border color of uh i don't know maybe something i don't know we'll look at it together but just a border color that is not too dark then the border radius is going to be three all right so let's see what it looks like i'm going to publish this app and then i'll go and check the front end so let's refresh the front end and uh, let's see what it looks like so i'm not really appreciating the border because it's the color is too close to this one we have to make it a bit darker so let's come back here and let's say we want the border color to be something darker all right in fact you don't even need to leave here you can just collapse this sidebar by clicking here and then you're just going to see what you have but i think this is too dark so let's see if we can reduce it a bit so border color one more time and take it up i could have just copied what i already had but i just want to show you the entire process so collapse here and i think this is fine it's close to what we have here perfect so we have this in place and so just the first one so if we save let's save first let's bring this guy out back and let's publish okay so we've published it let's refresh this page and see what it looks like aha so this is actually good at least it's not too dark all right so now i feel like i want to reduce the the opacity a bit so just take it up a little bit 
and then publish fresh yeah so this is i think this is a lot better all right so what i'm going to do now is since i have already done this first one all i'm just going to do is our this pencil icon here this is the element we want to copy so i'll right click and copy this pencil icon and then i'll just come here click on this second box and paste it in so paste voila click on this one paste it in like so come down click on this one paste it in like so paste it. so i told you that it's a lot simpler than it looks and you're seeing it right here and paste it in so now all we just need to do is to um adjust the content of each of the boxes right that's all we need to do so here i'm going to start with the second one and what does it say here it says e-commerce okay i can type e-commerce out so ctrl c and here i'm just going to see e-commerce e hyphen and then for this one i'll just paste that in then for the icon what did i use i, I honestly cannot find what i used <laughs> let me see if i can find the name okay open cart open cart uh okay this is what i used insert so that's for e-commerce then the next we have for mobile apps so ctrl c i think i remember the one i used for mobile apps so click on mobile apps and then just say mobile apps all right if you're if you're a web design company that offers i don't worry in the full course eh, i'll teach you how to offer services you don't even have the skill for don't worry i'll i'll teach you all about it um so here i'm just going to say play store i think play store this is it then what do we have next we have consulting i don't even know what this one is so consulting and then i'm just going to click here and i'll say consulting and then here i'm just going to paste this in and say consulting oh really why did i copy consulting i've copied the description so copy that and then slot it in here like so then for consulting i think we have something about user 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 okay i can't exactly find the the icon i use for consulting okay it's user tag user tag this one and then i'm just going to insert that what do we have next advertising okay Control c and just come here and click here and then i'm just going to say add advertising and i'm just going to paste that in here and then for the um i don't even let me check i'm not supposed to memorize all this so i think it's just ad this one where is the ad now wow i'm sure some of you are seeing it but i just cannot see it okay so let me just use this one then advertising but it's not what i used before i use something different but anyway you can always look for it then the last one is tech school so let's copy the description and then i'll come here and say tech school tech school and let's put this one control v now this one i think i maybe use a book or something book 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 book, book, book. i think this is what i used then insert perfect so now all we just need to do is add some space between this set of boxes and this heading because you notice that it's close to each other no in web design you want to space your elements so i'll click on this container here and then i'll go to the advanced now when i want to add a space between two elements not within i want to separate these two elements this container and this container i'll go to margin so I'll uncheck this to unlink it and i'll say for the top i want 30 pixels so you see it has added it bit outside of the container 
that's added the space outside of the container unlike let me show you unlike if i add this padding padding will be within the container and all these things are things that i explained before this section in the full course so here if i say 30 you see that it's inside the container look at the line of the container it's inside it so i want to add it outside so i'll say 30 here and you see that's added it so i'm just going to save once i save it i'll come here and refresh this page and voila so you can see we have everything in place so all i'm just going to do next is i'll just go to the next section which is the works section our works okay so i'll see i'll do that in the next video see you all right so now let's get back to work on the next section which is the project section so i'll come here and i will add um sorry i'll come here and i'll add a new um container it's going to be very similar to what we've done before so add the container first before we do any serious thing let us select the container and give some padding top and bottom so first i'll uncheck this and then i'll just say 50 on the top 50 on the bottom okay now you notice that i'm doing contrasting background so look at the first background there is a you like a color there in the image and then this is white and then this is gray and then i'm using white here so you don't want your site to be white entirely you want to have some contrasting background it's going to add beauty to the site all right so um i'll click here and i've added this guy so what i'll do next is i'm just going to copy this container Control c to copy and then i'm just going to come and paste it here so we are reusing this header component which is oh i copied the entire thing i'm sorry Control z I copied the entire thing that's not what i wanted to do so what i wanted to do was to copy just this header so let me copy this one i think this one is better to copy and then i'll just paste it here in this next container aha so this is going to be what does this say our work recent project so i'm going to say our work our work uh, Ghanaians will say our uh, work then here we're going to say recent projects all right so next you want to add let me see what did i even add okay i added the gallery right okay so next you want to add this gallery that will be able to show the images of the work you've just done and all of that so i'm going to come here and i will add um should i put it inside its own container i can put it in its own container so first of all let's add an element and just say container let's drop the container here what's going on here okay so we drop a container here now this container remember we always like to add some spacing so margin of 30 on the top so that there's a space then we'll add another element this is going to be gallery so gallery and uh, it's not just it's going to be this filterable gallery from essential add-on for elementor so i'll come here and just drop this gallery inside so this is what it looks like right so we don't want six we want three because we don't even have any portfolio we just want to use something as a placeholder so that our recent works project will not be empty all right so in this guy here items to show you want to show three items so three so that will just reduce the number to three all right the columns three that's fine so what you want to do next is you want to um, come to the gallery items and then you want to scroll down so i'm going to remove the last three one two three and you want to show this first three so let's edit this first one so i'll see i'll click on this guy to expand it then i will now come down to first of all change the name what did i use as the name of the first one i said e-commerce so i'll come here and i'll change the name first of all to e-commerce all right so now if i hover here you're going to see e-commerce so obviously you can also change the text to say something related to the project you, you built but i don't have time for that now so i'll scroll down and then i'll also change the image now i'll say choose image and then it's going to bring me here 
and then you want to upload the image now remember i told you i already have like a folder that contains all the image which i'm going to make available to you in the description of this video wherever you're watching it now what i'll do is i'll just drop some of those images and i think i used which ones did i use again i, I used this i used this so i'm selecting everything i used and which other one did i use i think i used this as well yes i used these three so i'll just drop these three images here like so so they are quite heavy right so what i'll do is in like in another section i'm going to teach you how you can handle images when you're working with images on your website and everything i'll teach you how you can handle all of that so the first one is going to be e-commerce and i think this one is an e this one is the first one i use but i can also use this one for e-commerce come on be fast so ideally what i will do before i even upload these images is that i'll compress them with an external tool right before i now upload them now even on wordpress i can also add a an image compression plugin but i rather you compress them externally so here I'll just use this first one for e-commerce. I'll select it. And so it's going to be added here. Okay. So you see it has been added. So now we just have to do one, two. So let's see what we use. This one we said LMS website is actually still e-commerce, but I just wanted the text to be different. And this one we said business. So we're going to come here and let us um, collapse this first one since we're done with it. No, that's not what I want okay so i'll collapse the e-commerce by clicking on it and then i'll open this one and then i'll change this to lms website all right then i'll change the image as well now ideally you may want to have leave a link this link tab here you want to leave a link so that when they click on this link it will open the website and that is somewhere here gallery link button all right so because i don't have a link i can choose to disable it but if you have a link then you can just put the link here you understand so that your users can like open the link and see what you, you've done on the project obviously you don't want them to open the link over your website so you want to select this guy and say open a new window all right that's something we'll talk about more extensively so you want to select this choose image and then you just want to choose this one and select okay so while it's selecting i will just go to the last one come on so let me collapse the lms and last one this one is going to say business website business web site then i'm just going to look for the image and that's going to be this one perfect select and we're good to go so just like that i'm going to go ahead and save or publish and then i'll come here and refresh the entire page so just like that we have a new section which is our work and you see here we have the gallery which we can open in a light box and we can you know scroll your users your customers can scroll and see what website you've done before which i think is a good thing because it shows proof of work all right now even if you've not built any website before it's still good to have something like this on your website you understand it's still good to have something like this um just to obviously if the customers are on your site they know you built this your your landing page site and we're going to talk about this for when we talk on the section on how to get clients or how to get i get clients every week you understand so um i will talk about that you know in the net in a special section of the course so what we, what do we have next we have um this advertisement section so we're going to do this one in the next video so next we're going to work on this section for this um tech boot camp now if you have a website hmm? if you have a website one of the things you can do on that website is you can advertise your services that are not you that are not directly related to you know building websites for clients so this now is a bootcamp i actually run right 
um i didn't even put a button ideally i should have put a button here that says um c boot camp or or get started or something like that so that would be a call to action button but because this is just a tutorial in my actual website i put a button so let me see xenotrustacademy.com there is a button there that um you know people that are interested in a boot camp they go and the so look at the learn more perfect so you can see front-end developer bootcamp i i actually do full stack front-end and full stack so i can see if customers say learn more it brings them to this website where they can get more information about the bootcamp all right so that's just one of the ways that i get people to sign up on the bootcamp and they, there's been a lot it's a lot different from just buying a course because in the bootcamp you you get to interact with me you know i get to guide you and all of that so it's a lot different so what i'm trying to say is that on your um website you can advertise your other related services so what i'm going to do is i would come here and we're going to create this section for the bootcamp so I'll come here and let's create another section it's going to be a single layout no this time we're going to have three so three okay so let's start by giving it um some padding so make sure you select it and then just uncheck this guy so that you can have some padding so here we're going to do 50 and on the bottom we're going to do 50 then i would set the background color to gray so styles and background type of classic and then color to gray which is eee -E -E. all right so that's it then what i think the heading okay we're going to bring the heading and some text so let's come back here i didn't even re i forgot to read what the heading said though. so let's come back here and i'll just right click this heading and copy it i hope it's only the heading i'm copying this time <laughs> okay i think i can do this i can right click this one and copy okay then i'll come here to the middle and paste it in paste okay so i copy the entire thing again so this time i can just delete this one right click and delete good now let me in, let me like adjust the size of this container to 20 instead of 25 and i'll adjust this one also to 20 instead of 25 then i'll make this one 60 so instead of 50 i'll set it to 60. okay then so what do we have next now we want to add a youtube video oh sorry there's a text so just to describe what the bootcamp is about so copy that and then i'll just come here and say i want to add an element so click on this plus icon and add a text editor below and here you just want to paste in the text we copied Control A, Control A. I did Control C instead of Control V. Control C, then Control V. Yeah, Control V. Perfect. You want this to be centered, so I'll clone styles and then I'll say center. It's centered. Then next, I'll now add the video. So let's add an element, and here I'll say I want to add a video. Now this one is fine, right? so i'll just copy this video and just drag it here okay now this video is a video that's from elementor so obviously you want to change the url so if you come to the finished project i think you can just say copy link here and then so this can be your own video any video you want to so here i'm just going to come here and change the link to my own link so you can see obviously i forgot to change the bootcamp the heading topic the topic on the heading so learn tech bootcamp so here i'm just going to come here click on this one and change it to learn and here i'm just going to see tech bootcamp tech bootcamp perfect right so that's it for this section oh i said a call to action button is actually important in this case so what i'm going to do is I'm going to come here so i want to add a button and i'll just add a simple button not the um other one i added before so just add a simple button somewhere here 
and i don't know it doesn't look good but let's just let's just style it first so for the button it's going to go to wherever link you want it to go to then the style is going to be centered so let's first of all let's center it good then i don't know Maybe let's see if i take the button up how is how is it going to look no 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 terrible let's just bring it down so the button text will say something like learn more so here i'll just say learn more learn more i think it's okay at the bottom really i think it's okay at the bottom so i'm just going to go ahead and save and publish and then let's come here to see what it looks like refresh so we're going to come down and this is learn tech bootcamp and it's youtube it's a youtube video so it takes some few seconds to load and this is it so learn more is right here aha so that that works for me you may want to style the button it's not it doesn't have to just be plain like the way i left it you may want to style it for example if you come to style you may want to change the color so for example look at this the normal color of the button is green um which works then you may want to say that when you hover on the button you want to change the uh background color so i'll say background type and then i'll say ba uh background type um so background type then i'll say color then i'll change it to maybe that my orange color since let me not just waste my time let me just say orange such that when you hover on the button it changes so that's that's still possible so then i'll just publish so but that's it basically so in the next one we're now going to build out this why choose or section which is really simple or maybe we're even going to build out these two sections together so that it's fast so i'll see you in the next one then all right so since we're already familiar with how you know building section work we can actually now go a bit faster so we're going to build these two sections in this video and just going to be over with the whole landing page so i'll come here and i'll say i want to add a container i want to add a flexbox layout um let's look at it again if i forget so one one two three okay perfect so i'll come here it's going to be a single layout first and in that single layout let's add the space on the top and bottom so click here and then come to advanced uncheck the padding and say you want 50 padding on the top and 50 padding on the bottom then we're now going to add a title so let's see we'll copy just the title hopefully we can get only the title and then we're just going to come here click here and paste it in okay fine we got only the title now what does this one say it says why choose us how we work so here i'm just going to click this heading and say why choose us choose us then here we're going to say how we work how we work then i'm going to what's the next thing i need to do bring these three guys here so here i'm just going to come back here and i'll add an element this time i'm going to add a grid so bring the grid at the bottom bah. perfect now select the grid and add some space between the grid and this upper one so go to advanced this time we're adding a margin of 30 so it will just separate the grid a bit now we don't want this grid we want the grid to have just one row so here i'm just going to set the row to one column three that's fine now what we want for the grid the elements inside the grid is going to be a box an image box so i'll just say box and i'll add an image box perfect so there's an image there's some text and you know now what we want is let me see just look at it okay one two three okay so here i'm going to select this guy and what does it say it says we listen i'll copy this one 
and then i'm just going to type out we listen we then i'll paste in the text good now as for this image i'm going to select it and we've not uploaded the images yet so let's bring it in that is this three set of images so i'll just drop it in here and then so we listen is this one that has a pen select ah, perfect now obviously this doesn't look like what we have here so we need to change the styling so here i'll come back here and then i'll say um style let's start with that then here we're going to say that we want the image to be on the left so image position set to left that works then the space between this one this is not so much so we want to look at it alignment um let's say image no 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 i'm not doing anything in the image i'm doing something in the alignment so i want it to be centered so that the image will be in the center then i want the space between this text so content let's see um the color of the text let's make it this color then the space between these two guys we want to reduce it as well okay i'm not seeing that here i think it will be maybe in the box so image spacing content spacing so just reduce that perfect this works so now that we've um let's see there's some space between the image and this one it's a bit more a bit more space um so image spacing i think i can increase it a bit okay then i think even the image size i, inc I should increase it a bit ah no i'm doing too much i think it's okay like this i'm not sure but yeah it's okay so we have um this so now all we need to do is to right click and copy and then <laughs> just like before we paste it in here and then we paste it in here paste so what does the next one says it says we implement which i can type out i'll come here i'll click on this second one and then i'll say um so this is going to say we implement okay and i'll just paste this one and then obviously we need to change the image as well to we implement so i think that was this one then the last one is we support so copy that and then come here select this let's change the image first we support has this support laptop and then we're just going to say we support come on and let's change the text as well perfect so we're done with this section and i'm just going to um save that and then like i said we're going to combine these two sections because i mean we've seen the process we've seen that it's quite easy to implement or to do so what i'll do here is let me show you some other trick you can duplicate this entire section so all you just need to do is to right click on this guy and say duplicate and it's going to give you an identical section below so what we want to do here is i don't need this um second box no not this i don't need this entire second box so i think i can right click and say delete aha so that second box is gone now this other one i want the color to be something bluish is it dark blue A dark blue perfect so i'm going to come here i'll highlight this one sorry and then i'll say that i want the style because background color is under style and then i'll just say i think we have maybe like a bluish dark blue color i'm not sure okay so that's it and then i'll just change this one to white so the first heading which is going to say what did it even say get started ready to begin okay so here we're going to change it to get started get sorry started all right then the style we're now going to set the color to white i don't know just white okay then let's add a 
let's add a a what's it called text that says we are ready to listen to your project oh i've not changed this one no, sorry ready to begin all right so now we're gonna add the text editor drop it here and what does it say it says we are available to discuss your project so copy that and then paste it in here Control A, Control V. You want to now go to styles and first of all you center it. Second of all, you change the text color to whatever. And last but not the least, you want to add the call to action button. So we already have a button that we created before this one. So we can use it by right clicking on this pencil icon and just copy the button and then come down here, click on this guy, right click and paste the button. Pala. so that's it get started then i think we're good to go let's look at it yeah we're good to go we can save so here i'm just going to go and say publish and let us see the entire project so i'll come here scroll to the top refresh the entire thing aha so let's scroll down i think this is nice really nice yeah this is really nice you can even play the video everything works perfect so great so let us now in the next video we're now going to work on adding animation to the page because one thing is that in the finished project when you like when the customer first lands on your website right as they are scrolling there's this slide animation that you're just going to notice so you can see you can see it's sliding up yeah that kind of sliding animation so we're going to do that in the next video all right i'll see you there okay so now let's go ahead and add animation to the sections of the pages um and by animations i, I demonstrated it in the last video but let me just do it again so normally when you scroll it will slide see you see the way it slide the section up like so to just slide the section up you can do different kinds of animation but i just like the simple slide animation so let me just show you how that works so if you come here now eh obviously you don't want to animate this first section but you could so let me just animate it and see how it works so if you click on this um dot here and you come to advanced under advanced let's collapse this layout you can see this motion effect so if you click on motion effects you can see entrance animation and then you can now select any one you want so there are quite a number of them there's fade in you know different animations but the one I, I i like using is slide up so look at it just type slide and say slide up so you see it's going to just slide that section up so if i publish this page now and then i go and refresh this one you see when the page loads it's going to slide the section up so that's the animation now you can actually play around with the um all the animations that are available the animation doesn't have to be on the entire section it can even be on the individual elements all right so but personally i'll just leave it in the so let me just do this second one i'll do this one i'll click here and then i'll see motion effects and then animation default i'll say slide up so you see so that's it basically that's how you add animation so you can add animations to the different section by yourself let me show you how this one works let me show you something different rather so for example this three here this one i'll highlight this one and then i'll go to motion effects and this one i will not say slide up i will say slide from let me say slide from left right this one i will say slide from maybe top uh, or maybe bottom so let's collapse the layout and go to the motion effect and then i'm just going to say i just want to show you something different so slide from the bottom slide in sliding up 
then this one i'll say slide from the right so come here collapse motion effect and then i'll say slide from the right okay so now let's go ahead and save i just want to show you the different kinds of animation that can happen so now let me refresh this page so it's going to slide the first section up and then if we come down did you notice the way this one slided in this one slided in and like that uh -huh, perfect so you can play around with animations both on the entire section and on individual elements so that's just what i wanted to point out to you you get so i think that's about it for this one um i will see you in the next one where we're going to build out the contact us page all right okay so now let's start working on the contact us page and for that i'll need to come back to pages and i would open up the what's it called contact so right click and open in a new tab to edit it so when you open this page here you're going to see this edit with elementor that's what you're expected to click if you click on that it will open up the page in elementor give it a couple of seconds and it should be loaded perfect now if i come here and i go to the contact us page then i will see um the way this is it's just a simple page really so let's get started to build it um now you may be thinking why don't we have like a contact us form right you may be thinking that now that's something that i probably would cover in another part because handling forms is like a topic on its own there are so many things related to handling forms there are so many websites that have forms that when people fill it they don't get any notification emails are not sent and all of that so it's a very dicey area and that's why I, I just decided that okay let's just put the contact information here and then subsequently um in a latter part of the course i would talk exclusively about forms so there's so many things that are packed in the full course right that you you need to just take advantage of especially when there's a discount so i'm going to come to this uh, forms page and then first off i'm going to add a section now the section obviously just like before let's look at it again first one two okay so just like before it's going to be a layout and it's going to be a single is it a single layout yeah i think it's a single layout so single layout and like we did we're going to add some padding on the top and bottom so padding of 50 or 50 perfect now let's come to the home page and let's copy the title section so right click copy the title section come here paste it in so the good thing about elementor is that you can copy sections from one page to another these people they really finish work <laughs> with the plugin so contact us get in touch and send us a message ctrl c so let me come back here to my contact us page and this will be contact us and this will be get in touch get in touch all right then i'm just going to add a uh, text editor here and the text editor will just see that now let's make sure we center the text so click styles and center aha perfect so what do we have next we have this section this section and it's going to be like a grid so let's come here say we want to add an element and then we're going to now say grid and um, drop it inside here like this so the grid now we need to um inside the grid we need to columns not three so here i'll say i'd want just one row and two columns so you see one two now in this first column here we're going to put a container inside it so take a container and drop it inside this first column okay now inside this container we're now going to add another element the element is going to be what's it called what did i do what did i use icon box so we're going to search for icon box this one and drop it now this is an icon box obviously it doesn't look like what we want 
but let's go ahead and start working on it so the first one is going to say address so let me copy this address and let's just see address here and then this is going to change to this guy now is the styling that will now determine how everything looks so go to the style and for the box we're going to say we want it to be the icon to be on the left then how did i align it okay so top so it means it's okay like this the alignment is okay then we're going to see that we want the icon so we'll go to icon and we want the icon to have a color of green so that's one then oh there's something i'm missing just need to remember okay just a second let me just confirm okay anyway let me just change the color of the content so content and the color is going to be this one and then hold on and then the spacing between the content i'll reduce it okay then this icon is what i need to work on i really need to work on the icon this icon we're going to I'm going to change it to address icon so let me come back here and see uh, is it home i think it's home insert insert but if you look at this one you see that it has a circle around it i'm actually trying to remember how i implemented the circle because i can't remember so let me see i think it's stacked yeah perfect so stacked then I'll just come here to the styles and reduce the size of the icon itself. So icon, just reduce the size. Yeah, so I think this works. This works. Perfect. Yeah, that works. So that's it. So now I will now right click and duplicate this icon. So right click, copy, and then just paste it still inside the same place. Paste twice. So it will just be at the bottom, paste it again. Okay. So the next one here, we're just going to say phone. So let's change this to phone. Like this. Insert. And this is going to say phone. And yeah, we're just going to have a number. So any number. 090. Uh, 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 whatever it is you want. Then here we're going to say email. So I'm going to say envelope. Select this one. Insert. Then I'm going to now type out an email. So this can now be info at idigital.inc. Something like that. But I've now also shown you how to create a customized email. It's something that we're also going to cover in the course. So what we have here on this side is a map on this other side is a map so let me show you so we're going to have a map map is just going to be like a map to your office so from here people can actually just click and get direction to your office so here i'll just come to this guy i'll say add element and then i'll say map so google map is what you what you need so just drag it and drop it here and then just add your address so here i'm just going to say lagos nigeria okay nigeria so it's just going to look for this address and that will be what will be displayed on the map so this is lagos nigeria so that's it just go ahead and save the page and we're good to go so if you come here and you go to the contacts page you're going to see that we have the address oh we have address here sorry this one should say email and then save so if you refresh this one you see that we have everything working good so now uh I, I think the last thing we need to do is the blog and really the blog is well it's not really anything special so let me show you how we're going to do that one so let me come here first and then i'll just say blog and okay so this is what we have for the blog right so what you want to do is 
you want to come to your dashboard and you want to click on post and all posts now this will show you all the blog posts on your website currently we have just one so you want to add another one so add new posts and let's just grab what this is about ctrl c and um okay this is it right here ctrl v then i'll just copy the entire text here like this up to the bottom ctrl c you don't even want to know how many years ago i created this post <laughs> wow time flies though. so it's been such a long time that i created the post so i will remove i'll remove i'll remove this link just i don't need it uh -uh. i say remove link you are doing another thing okay i don't need that all right then for this post there are two things that are that, that we need to do first of all we need to give the post a category so here on this side i'll just say add category and then i'll say e-commerce let's see e-commerce and then i'll say add and then lastly i'll say add an image a featured image so i'll come down here and say set featured image and then i've not uploaded that image but i have it so let's come to our okay so this is it right here okay so also in the full course we're going to show you how you're going to work with images and all of that everything will be explained step by step we're not even going to rush so let's come here and then i'll just say publish so if you publish that and you come to the front end of the website and you click on refresh the blog page you're going to see that new post you created so this is it right if you open it it's just going to show you the content of the post good now what you need to do now is you need to delete this one because i mean this one you're not doing anything with it so we'll come here i will now go to all posts and then i'm just going to say trash so i've deleted that uh, first post the dummy post and now we just have this one so based on the kind of traffic you want to attract to your website you're going to want to create a number of posts on your website that is useful not just dummy posts you want to create a number of posts that is useful and in the full course i'm going to show you how you can do that with the help of ai right and so there's a lot to learn so i can say that throughout this course we've learned the basics of you know how to build a website and i hope i was beginner friendly there's a lot more that we need to learn about not just building a website but running a web design agency and that will be covered in the entire full course but so far so good i hope you've been able to benefit something from this uh course also remember that in a couple of weeks i'll be launching the full web design agency course and right now there's a discount that you can take advantage of is bf pre-sale because right now we're very close to black friday so bf pre-sale so make sure you take advantage of that this is um, the course landing page you can see here that we have a lot that we're going to be covering all right so that's about it for this one if you're not subscribed to the channel make sure to subscribe before you leave and turn on your notification i'll see you in another video bye